welcome to a new series we're going to do uh, here on our Lead Jiu Jitsu channel, which is three things I wish I knew as a white belt. I know almost everyone who's doing Jiu Jitsu for more than probably a few years uh, learned something later in their career um, or figure stuff out themselves or like, why did no one show me this years ago? Um, and so our goal is to get that out of uh, that combined experience out of all these uh, professors' heads and experienced students and get it to you so whether you're a white belt or you're a color belt, uh, you can catch up and you know, learn from our mistakes and not have to go through the same journey. So, uh, first of all, what's, what's the first uh, thing that you wish someone would have taught you during your white belt time? Uh, the first one, it comes from closed guard. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's one of the first areas we learn, we're stuck in somebody's closed guard often. Uh, a simple way to use our hips, which is, should be standard, to keep from getting our, getting our posture broken down every time. I think I was a purple belt before I, somebody pointed it out to me. Uh, actually, I got it in a seminar from Kobe. No, no, that's the, I just remember that's when I got it. Awesome. Yes, so uh, close guard. One of the biggest, uh, I, in my classes, I always try and point this out now, just because it's one of those things I wish I knew as a white belt. Uh, small detail, huge impact. First, upright, we all know good posture and closed guard, right? Well, what, what's one of the things that happens when we get good posture? What we tend to do is we tend to arch our back in, which also makes it very easy because now my hips are not engaged in the right way. What we need to do is not only arch our back, but engage our glutes so it's almost a pelvic thrust. What it does now is it engages all of these muscles for base. So no matter how much he yanks and moves, I don't move. Right? I'm not even worried about this now because I'm so engaged here in my base. Right? We talk about people with good base and stuff like that because they don't get knocked over. This is something a lot of them are probably doing inherently. They don't even realize that some of us don't know it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the number one thing I wish I knew when I was I, like, I can feel your, your hips like tilt this way, mm -hmm. right? Can, can you show that? Like, so the bad way would be like butt out. The good way is roll hips in, like flex the glutes, more of a pelvic thrust as I'm arching my back towards him and hips in and out. I can, yeah, I can feel him turn. Right, so I'm engaging my, my glutes, my hip flexors, my quads more than anything. When I do this, I don't really engage my quads. When I do this, I'm engaging my quads, which is one of the biggest muscle groups in our body. Might as well use them, right? And it changed my whole game in guard. People didn't want to put me in guard anymore. That's awesome. <laughs> um, cool, I'll tell you what, let, let's do two more. What's the second one? The second one would be uh, how to do a hip escape properly without hurting myself. All right, let's um, see it. So one of the first things we do when we, we learn our hip escapes is our hands in, hands on our side, and then we move our hips. But often we let our elbows stay there. What that does is two things. One is it leaves this wide open, but also now if I want to go to my belly, I have to roll over my shoulder, which I now have bad shoulders. <laughs> so in that, learning that my elbow should be in on my side the whole time, Notice how I lifted my hips. I'm lifting my hips so I can move easy, but also so that I can get my elbow underneath me. Now, if he's trying to engage in side control, I'm still always blocked here, appropriately as opposed to here, which his knee comes right in. And also now is when I want to go belly down, it's already right where I want it to be and I didn't have to expose my arm or hurt my shoulder. Nice. <laughs> All right, and then last one, give the third. Last one, now this one I didn't learn until I was a brown belt. It's how to defend a guillotine properly. Uh, I had a, I've had a lot of wonderful experiences with guillotines. Of all the chokes that have inadvertently put me under because I fought too long, it's been the guillotine. Now, we always, whenever somebody attacks anything at our neck, what we do, we reach for it. What happens is, is a lot of times we reach for the wrong spot on the guillotine. So as Professor Sean reaches in for a guillotine, right, he might have a chin strap and over here. We get our hand in where we first can and use that opening here so we grab here and we're like okay okay good i'm between the arm and my neck but he can just squeeze his arm and my fingers into my neck all guillotines need to be controlled at the hand as he's reaching in anywhere in here i need to get a hold of this thumb with either hand and that's the proper defense so no matter where he's trying to go on my guillotine i get in here he can squeeze as much as he wants anywhere else he can lose his elbow and try to get to that place if i have the hand he can't finish the problem that's me i feel that like control Right across, mm -hmm. and it's you know the thing is I remember that was one of the biggest uh, details that I got from uh, John Danner. He 
his uh, attack the back series. He talks about controlling on the thumb instead yep. of the wrist. Yep. Exactly what you're talking about on the kids, it's a great point. Um, grabbing, uh, if you grab the wrist, you kind of fight through that. But out here, you know, yeah, those, I, I felt already that was the uh, weak link in the chain becomes this wrist and the hand muscles as yep. opposed to the big bicep. Yeah, and if I'm going for a guillotine and somebody gets a hold of my hand, I abandon it almost right away because I know it's not going anywhere. Right? Yeah. But if they have that arm, I'll stay there all day. Yeah. Well, that's well, awesome. Those are three things that I wish I knew was a white belt. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Professor Roscoe. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you, Sean. See you guys.